Just a, a quick note, too, uh, because we ran out of time, but Steve Millington shared with me off the air that he had intended, he was one of the few Republicans in a position of leadership within this county who had intended to be uh, last week at the Brigitte Gabriel presentation. But what had happened was he had tickets set aside at the door is that unexpectedly some of his grandchildren showed up and uh, from out of town. And I do know that people do run into those. And some people are on vacation. We're not blaming every Republican leader in this community for not being there. Some obviously have vacations and had a few other commitments, but there was clearly an opportunity for people to attend. And as I say, it's not an endorsement that you go. You go because you'd like to find out what an internationally renowned speaker has to say on this topic. And if you're in politics, you know, information is an important thing. And so it is a good question that we need to raise to these people and ask them, who are you afraid of? Because I'm not even sure it's fear. Steve said it's sometimes the portrayal, well, you know, so-and-so. was. But this is Twin Falls County. I don't know about Democrats, but if you're a Republican, it's likely not going to hurt you to be seen sitting there. It, it just the, the numbers when it comes to elections are so overwhelming. It's going to work out, I think, for your favor. Now, another point to be made, I just got an email from a friend of mine. He's retired from the State Department. To put it mildly, he was a spy. <laughs> His name is Fred. A friend lives back on the East Coast and dropped me a line this morning. And Fred would like me to appear on a, a show on Sirius Satellite Radio to talk about this situation that took place a couple of months ago at the Fawnbrook Apartments here in Twin Falls. Because he said, I've been reading a lot about it on the internet, and I'd really like to know what's going on. And he said, I can get you on the show, and we can have a discussion about this. I'll get to that in just a moment, but I want to get to a telephone caller first. Coming up on nine minutes after nine o'clock, it is still at 54. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You're up next, you're on air. Yeah, Bill, I hope I haven't been able to listen like I wanted to, but uh, I read in the paper that uh, there was a sexual assault by a man that I would assume was a Muslim. He sure has a name that would indicate that. Another situation here that has occurred in our city that uh, shows that the unpredictability of this thing is so, I don't know how to explain it. I just know this, that it's it's a concern. And when our elected officials, after you've invited them in a very, you know, congenial way, don't even give a, you know what, to show up because they think they know more than the person that grew up in Lebanon and grew up in, in the kind of situation she had. You know, everybody can learn something from that, from what we learned that night from Brigitte. So, I don't know, you get so tired of this arrogance that you say, why, who am I a strange person that I care so much about my country and I'm so concerned about the future of it because my family and I live here and my friends? What is with these people that we elect that they seem to act like they're just impermeable? And I guess I'll hang up. Thanks, Steve. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the call, too. Good hearing from you. I, all I can tell you is I think that what it's coming down to in the, in, in the divide, perhaps, that we're seeing and why people are trying to shy away from these discussions is because there has developed a lack of trust, not only from some members of the public, but what I'll call the local ruling class, if you will. Ruling, I, I, I don't mean to make light of it, but I'm just saying people who are in charge who really run things in this community, perhaps don't have a lot of trust for the other side. And sometimes, let's be honest, the other side has not helped out its own cause. I was uh, just reading a story on the Internet about all of this a couple of weeks ago. Again, this is from somebody who claims to be from a national publication writing about this story that happened here. And they opened up the story talking about our prosecutor, Grant Loeb's. And then in the next paragraph, they talked about our prosecutor, Grant Loeb. Then a few paragraphs down again, he was Grant Loeb's. Then a few more paragraphs later, he was Loeb. And it alternated through the story, Loeb's, Loeb, Loeb's, Loeb. Well, which one is it? 
you harm your credibility. I, I have to. I'm terribly nearsighted. And uh, I used to have a proofreader by the name of Suzanne, and she's no longer with me. Uh, Suzanne used to actually reread everything that I wrote and help me because I can go back and reread it. I can run it through spell check. And sometimes I still, I'll look at something I post to our website later on and it'll say, uh, it, it, it just, it, it, spell check thinks it worked because the word is fine, but it wasn't really what, the, what I wanted. So I have to go through these things with a fine tooth comb. That harms my credibility when I do that. You harm your credibility when you can't get the prosecutor's name straight and you followed up three or four times in the story and you alternate back and forth between the correct spelling and then the wrong spelling. Number two, when this fir- first broke, and of course there was a, we're still, we're still getting straight who these people were, these, uh, these children of these uh, refugees. Uh, we heard uh, what Sudanese or Somalia, it turned out they were Eritrean. It's a fine distinction but it was far away from Syrian. And, you know, those things obviously hurt the credibility too. Did it change what happened? No. But now we're back to people saying it's after about two or three weeks where it got straightened out, where it was sexual assault, now people are back saying, well, it was rape again. And, And, you know, I'm sorry, but the charge right now is sexual assault. So again, you know, when people on my side start using the tactics that Democrats use just because they feel the ends justify the means, I start to lose a little faith in people on my side. And then when I read, well, it was two hours before police showed up. Well, turns out I happen to know a law enforcer who happened to be among those who responded the day of that call way back in June. Time was actually 43 minutes. They would have been there sooner, but when the call came in, Police were handling a couple of other big calls that day, and you may have a big police force, but it's spread out over three shifts, seven days a week. It's unfortunate, but we can't have a cop on every corner. So they said, is the little girl in danger right now? They were told, no, she's safe at home. So if she had been in danger at that moment, they would have gone racing over there. But because she was not in immediate danger, they they finished the calls they were on, and then they went there. But 43 minutes is not two hours. And to continually portray it as that, and then I keep hearing, well, there was a conspiracy of silence. There was a cover-up. Define cover-up for me. The kids got arrested. They went to Juvie Hall. There was a trial going on at some point. And they'll, they'll pay for what they did, as much as kids can pay for what they've done. So when I keep reading you, people say, well, the cover-up. What cover-up? And I realized that a couple of members of the city council were a little rude, and they should not have been. Uh, they, they, they apparently are supposed to be looking out for everyone in this community, and obviously some of them are a little on the arrogant side. And you wonder why in Twin Falls, Idaho, of all places, would anybody be in politics who was arrogant? It's, after all, it's Twin Falls. However, it doesn't make our side right when we continue to say these things that aren't true. Yes, somebody was assaulted and she was a little girl. And then I keep hearing, no one will help her find a new home. All right. Some of you folks out there who are counseling her family or claim to be counseling her family or looking out for her family, and there might be some question about whether you're really looking out for the family or whether you're using the family for your own, your own means, why don't you open up your own home? If you've got a big enough house, let them live with you for a while. If it's that traumatic that they're still staying at Fawnbrook, Open up your own dang doors and let them in. I had somebody say, well, you know, the churches aren't doing anything for these people. Well, have they gone to the churches and asked, number one, and number two, well, if you're a Christian, then open your own doors and let them come stay with you for a time. Well, gee, I... uh, So, you've been hurting your own dang cause out there. In fact, in politics, there's been a cabal here that has been hurting its own cause for months now. You run people for public office who go out and make all sorts of wild accusations, who suffer from their own self-inflicted wounds, and then they make all of this noise and then they claim everybody else is a sinister player who's out there to get them and get everybody else, but you can't offer any evidence of it. You just make wild-eyed accusations, and when your candidates lose, then you blame me because I wouldn't get on board with your stupid-ass candidates. To be honest with you, that's a good way to describe that. Maybe if you'd be a little rational for a change, 
it might actually serve you better. To walk into a police station unannounced and demand to have a meeting with a police chief right now to talk the Constitution, and then claim that you got roughed up because they searched you for firearms when you're known to be a proponent of the Second Amendment and a firearms instructor, gee willikers, there's a shock. People have been shooting up police stations all across the country. Are you nuts? So you're trying to make an argument against this refugee resettlement program, and I'm in favor of bringing it to an end because we are, we are going to experience difficulties from it. But, you know, we're not in control of it on the local level, number one. And number two, if you wouldn't come across as so bat crap crazy in your arguments sometimes, you might get a better hearing from the folks in politics. But that's been the problem. You couldn't get your facts straight from the beginning. And then you turn around and you make stuff up. I mean, there's a lot of people out there making stuff up in these arguments. No, it was not two hours response time. And yet you keep hammering away at these things which aren't factual. And then you wonder why you can't get people on board with you when you want them on board with you. Well, maybe you ought to stop pretending you're Hillary Clinton and start acting like a, like a good conservative or a good Christian. And instead of trying to make an argument because the ends justify the means, get back to the actual facts and reality. Callers joining us this morning. You're up next. Got about a minute before the break. It's 919. Bill Colley with you on KLIX. Go ahead. Thank you. Let's try another caller. We've got about 30 seconds to go before the break. You're on the air. No, I guess not. Seems to me that a lot of people, uh, when push comes to shove. And by the way, since this story broke, Grant Loeb's has been on the air with us now twice. Well, he sits here for an hour once a month. And you have an opportunity to call him. We open the phone lines, give out a telephone number. If you'd like to confront him about it, the opportunity has been there, and you haven't done it. You know why you haven't done it? Because you know, in an argument, he is going to eat you alive. Because he is actually going to start citing some factual things. To the limit, he can talk about this, and that's the other part of it. You also know that legally, he is constrained about several different uh, details of this case. You can't talk about them publicly. But you also know that, it, uh, that, that it's easy to stand by on the sidelines, call him names, and claim that he is a sinister operator out there who is trying to cover up this crime because apparently you claim he doesn't like little girls or something like that, or he's behind this program. Meanwhile, while his office deals with an epidemic of crimes committed by illegal aliens and refugees, yeah, of course he is, right? But you haven't called him up on the air when you've had an opportunity to discuss it with him, have you? That takes a mightily big set of uh, cojones, and apparently some of you don't have it. If we could just get some sanity back in this argument, and you could stop acting like a bunch of yahoos, then maybe someone in politics will take you a little more seriously. Tomorrow morning, we'll have a guest on the air with us from uh, Trip Family Medicine between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. A weekly thing that we do called Better Health. Between 8.30 and 9, you have an opportunity to call one of the medical pros from the office of Dr. Jonathan Tripp right here in Twin Falls, located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office. And uh, generally we pick a, a specific topic, but that doesn't mean that you, uh, you're precluded from calling about any other ailment you might have. Because they're here. And that's the whole object when we created this segment was to have someone who can put you at ease when it comes to some of these issues you may have with your health. And a reminder, Dr. Tripp's office is still looking for new patients. And often if you get up in the morning and you have the sniffles or you have the rumbles or whatever else it might be, you call the office, generally they are going to see you the very same day. Just to pass that along. Again, tomorrow morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. Coming up on 925, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Here's the thing Are any of you conspiracy theorists out there going to challenge me this morning? The opportunity is there. Telephone number 736 0300. 736 0300. We've had a lot of allegations made in this community over the last couple of months. Now, again, we go back basically for a good reason. We are all concerned. Some of us feel that this program needs to be stopped. 
But why are you harassing local officials about it who have no control over the program? And number two, why would you feel you have to make some things up in order to buttress your argument? And that, that's the part that really gets me. And some of these people, they'll, they'll go on Facebook and then they'll suddenly be giving me revelations from God and chewing me out and citing, you know, <clears throat> Proverbs or Psalms. And, and I just let's sit there and think, yeah, but what does God think about you when you're making up stuff? You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Morning, Bill. Uh, totally agree with you. Uh, it's That mentality is what's kind of prevented myself and, and a lot of people, even politicians, some politicians, from joining uh, the view, you know, your view, my view, because of the association with some of the folks who first thing they want to do is, well, I'm going to grab my gun and get ready or, or you know, the snark, snarkiness and and the lack of tact. And, and, and I've had many discussions over the last year about that. And that is the thing that's driving influential people away from supporting these issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, I had, I had a fellow tell me the other day, he said they would like to see these, these boys... And thank you for the call. They would like to see these little boys dragged out into the public square, hanged and castrated. And the fellow apologized for saying that. Now, that may be a little over the top, but what do you expect is going to happen to them? They're children. Did they do something wrong? You bet. Did they likely learn it from somebody older? Ugh, that's the scary part. They probably did. But on the other hand, there's a thing called justice. This is not Judge Roy Bean's courtroom where they call you in and say, I don't like your looks and string you up. How, how do you think this works? You know better. Most of you people out there likely at some point in life have had some sort of involvement with the criminal justice system or even civil court. I've been in the civil court venue, and let me tell you, it drags on and on and on. There are conflicts because people have other cases they have to work on. I remember a family court judge telling me one time in another state, he said, I have 2,200 cases a year. Now, you subtract all the weekends that he is not working. And sometimes they do come in on Saturdays to try to help cut that load down. But if you cut away, I don't know, 100 days a year because of weekends, then his workload is down to about 260 days. Maybe he gets a week's vacation or two. Then we're down to about 240 days. He's got a sandwich, 2,200 cases in. There are people out there who are just, I don't know what's wrong with you if you don't understand that, but that's how it's working right now. Now, if you'd like to pay considerably more in taxes, we could hire a lot more people and maybe speed this up. So if you want to pay double what you're paying now, well, all right, let's go ahead and do it. You're up next. You're on the air at 928. Another one of those. All right. You're on the air on KLIX. Go ahead. Good morning, Bill. You know, I think the biggest problem we have with a lot of the stuff, and I'm as guilty as the next guy, is we end up judging somebody through public opinion instead of facts. And that's what the court case is supposed to be about. Uh, we're hearing stuff from the street, hearsay. It's the same old thing where you make a circle of people and you say one thing to somebody and go all the way around. By the time it gets back to you, it's not even what you said. So they're dealing with, situations and facts and stuff that there's gotten and we're just going to have to wait and see what happens i i i say why you know if the kids did this where did they get the idea to do it that right. is the scary part they are likely and, have know, they been abused themselves yeah and that's possible or they've seen this happen in front of their eyes and, and, and that's the scary part and we don't know the culture is different it, it is what it is but We've got to, as a society, keep the blindfold on, on, on Lady Justice and let facts drive the case, not public opinion. Amen. God let you go on that count because we've got a hard break at 930 and it's 54. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Yeah, there's a lot of rush to judgment out there, whether it be this case or the Jack Yaddis case. Uh, you know what? Wishful thinking does not necessarily make it evidence. So I don't think I'm going to end up going on that show on Sirius Satellite Radio because 
the writer Fred, who asked me if I would do it and talk about this case, likely feels I'm going to back up everything that's been said by Pamela Geller or Breitbart, most of whom are getting uh, the information that they have from people who don't have the facts straight in the first place. And I'm simply not going to do that. Yes, a horrible crime was committed. Justice is now being done. All of this other stuff is just extraneous anger that's related to it. And it's, uh, again, I don't know how people expect they can be taken seriously with the, uh, with the way that they have been publicly trying to. You know what it is? It's propaganda. That's the sad part about it. These are people that I was supporting, and yet they turned around and they decided to engage in this because they felt propaganda was the way to get what they wanted. And for all of their complaints about how, and then they said, well, media was also involved in this conspiracy and the cover-up. I didn't know anything about it until I actually, I went to lunch with a fellow who works for the city. And it was the day after it broke at a council meeting here. So what silence? Nobody had bothered to tell me. And I think a couple of other people in town then said something to me about it. But again, it, it, it wasn't as if it was kept a secret. There were people who were doing the investigation and all of that. What do you think, again, did they need to do? Put up a big megaphone in City Park and say, Hello, some Muslim boys did some bad things. Hello, some Muslim boys did a bad thing. Hello, Muslim boys are doing bad things. Hello, Muslim boys are sometimes bad. Okay. Uh, I got you. How many hours a day should we do that for your uh, your satisfaction? Maybe all night long. 66 right now. It's 9:35. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News 1310.com. 736-0300, the telephone number. You're next. You're on air. Good morning, Bill. Thank you for bringing this topic up. I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, the thing is, is, from my experience in uh, the military, from the public affairs angle, when I was in public affairs, what happened in the community here on this long book thing, unfortunately, was our officials just didn't get out in front of this quick enough. Right. When, and when an event happens like this, whoever gets out first, their story is usually what's taken as the facts. Everything else is, is damage control. And... Unfortunately, our local officials seem to almost have to get shamed into actually addressing what happened. It's too bad that they weren't aware enough of what's going on with the, um, the uh, refugee issue and the feelings that are going on to realize that this has the potential to blow up into something big. They just didn't see that, and when they didn't see it, that's what happened. That's where it went south. And, and I, you know, some of them were surprised when they first heard about it at a council meeting. They did not know. And I, they were not lying. They did not know. Should they have known? Well, the problem is, as I've said it before, when it comes to these people who are being resettled here, whether they be illegal immigrants or refugees or just regular immigrants, they don't live in the politicians' neighborhoods. The politicians are isolated from it all. Uh, they, they, these people get dumped in the neighborhoods where I happen to live. And so, you know, because of their isolation and they don't want to know anything more about it, uh, that's part of the problem, too. Exactly. And when it happens like this, if you're not aware that this could be a potential problem, because I know my boss in the public affairs, the first thing he, he taught me was when something happens, you've got to get out in front of it because the first people to talk about it are the ones that are going to be believed. And if you're the first ones, they're going to believe you, and you can get the truth and the message out there as opposed to all the rumor and propaganda that goes on. So there you go. I thank you very much for the call and the input. I, I will tell you that there are likely people who are at City Hall who have been trying to make that impression upon uh, these people in government. How successful they have been, I don't know. But I think that this should be a good lesson for people in elective office Exactly. When, when, when you hire those professionals and their job, the professionals, it is their job to do these things and help you manage your relations with media, you might want to listen to the professional. Uh, I think too often, and maybe it's because people here, the city has grown so fast. What used to be such a sleepy little community, and it likely was easy to get everything done and not have to worry about too many of these situations. 
but you don't have to drive very far. Just go down Pole Line Road like you're driving to Filer and you'll see just how the explosion of the population around here and, and people have to realize it's 19, uh, it's, it, well, it's not 1954 any longer. It's not 1984 or 1994. It's 2016 and things are drastically different now and things are only going to get drastically more different as the city grows, which it is by leaps and bounds in a surrounding area. And at some point, you've got to stop thinking, well, this is the way we've always done things, and this is the flip side of all of this. Maybe listen to the professionals you hire. If you listen to them, then you might actually not have to worry about all of this fallout. Short break on the way. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX. And I used to, before I took this job, one of my roles was actually advising various candidates to public office. And you could tell them one thing, and they'd nod their head and go, okay, okay. And then the next day you'd turn on a radio show that you'd advise them not to go on, and guess what? They're on the radio show, and they're sinking fast. And you were like, I thought we had this cleared up. But, you know, the ego of a politician is a, is a big, big thing.